Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to Last Humans Tech. In this one, we're going to talk about the boot process of Linux and how it works with the grub menus, etc. So the first thing you should know is the boot order of a Linux machine. So I'm just going to type it just for visual aspect, although it means nothing. So first your BIOS, of course your post power on self-test is first. Then your BIOS is going to load and look for a boot device. Now it's going to look for a master boot record on one of your disks to be able to know where to boot. When it finds it, your grub is going to start the bootloader and it's going to load a temporary RAM system, initRD. This is a temporary file system as it builds your system. After that, your kernel is going to load and it is then going to load your true file system. Finally, after your file system is loaded, your init processes will start and it will load the machine at each phase of the init process until the machine is up and running. So let me just cancel out of this stuff that we don't need. We're going to do a reboot on this Fedora machine and I'm going to press escape as soon as I get a chance here so we can get to the grub menus and on this grub menu you have a few different options that you can use on each of these lines here you can use the E to edit the line the A to modify kernel arguments or the C to go to a grub command line these are very common commands and you will need to know these for any testing or certifications so let's just take the top one here, which is our true operating system kernel that we use on this box. And I'm going to press E. And here you can see you can edit different parts for inserting modules, loading. You can adjust your options on this. And you can press Escape to exit out of this. So that's what the edit looks like for that particular line. Next, you can go to the A, which can be a bit more risky. You better know what you're doing if you do this. And the A is not working on this Fedora, so we will skip that. And you then have the C, which should take you to a grub command line. And here it is here. And you can escape at any time. So the three important options you need to remember are E, A for kernel arguments, which works on some flavors only, and C for command line. And any other options that a test asks you probably do not exist for this system. All right, guys, we're just doing a test on the Ubuntu system now. We were on the Fedora you just saw a minute ago. So on the Ubuntu, we just did a reboot at the terminal and you held the shift key on the Ubuntu to get to the grub menu whereas the Fedora I held the escape key to get to the grub menu so let's say we have the top line here again we can do E for edit remember to edit the different boot options and then I can escape to get back let's see if we have the A option to modify kernel parameters in this one again this does not work but we can probably go to advanced parameters here too as a different option for that. And with the C, same thing again as the Fedora. You can get to the grub menu. Then you can escape and go ahead and boot. Now we'll just stay with the Ubuntu 64 for right now since we're already here. And a very, very important command that you should know is the dmessage command and what this is going to show is show the startup log and the boot log where you can look for errors so first we'll go ahead and pipe it to less so we can see the screen and this will show all the different boot up messages and startup messages if you're looking for a particular issue that you might want to track and I press Q to end that then you can also do a D message, let's say grep CPU. Remember, grep is to search for a particular pattern. So we're going to look in the D message and look for anything that's related to the CPU. 
Here you can see it pulls out the specific lines which have CPU in them. And if you think you have a specific hardware problem, such as CPU, this is how you could isolate just the lines you wanted to see and make sure you don't have any CPU errors. In the same fashion, you could do a memory and just look at your memory lines in the dmessage file. And this could also check if you have any DIMM errors, any memory or riser errors, and things like that. This would be the same for the Fedora box also. You have your dmessage command, and you can grep for certain areas if you don't want to see the whole entire file. Now another place that you can go to look at these logs is, let's go into cd var log, that's change directory into var log and let's look in here and you do have the dmessage logs as you can see and let me show you what we have here so you have dmessage is your current log dmessage.0 would be an older archived log and it will add and append numbers after it so the short one is your actual log now another log you can look at here in the var log directory is your boot log and this is another way to look at look for any errors on the boot and let's go ahead and do this to less and you can see this is the same lines you would sometimes see on a Linux boot up where it's going to show you each step and you can look for the OK and you can even grep for errors and such and things like that so the boot log is another place you can look for some of your startup errors and just to show you the same thing, let's hop on our Fedora box, Fedora 64, same as Red Hat basically, and go to the same place, var log. And in here, you also have the boot log, if I spell it right. What am I doing here? And here is a different way to look at it, where you can see, you can check for OK on all these different startup steps and look for any errors or problems and this is another way to review the boot logs and errors the dmessage file and the var log boot file now let's talk about the init levels the run levels real quick I'm just going to create a file just for fun so we have somewhere to type so your level 0 is going to be halt I'm talking about init levels here and your level 1 is going to be single user with command line your level 2 is multi user but no network connectivity and this is command line and level 3 is going to be your multi user with network and also command line level 4 is going to be a custom or blank init level that you could configure yourself it is rarely used in the Linux systems level 5 is going to be your default on most Linux systems this is the multi-user with network command line and GUI this is your most common run level and init level for the Linux systems and 6 is the easy one reboot so you can go init 6 and the system will reboot so study these six different run levels for Linux this will definitely be on some kind of certification test and is a very common question now on this Fedora box, you can see we're going to look at your startup scripts location. And it's going to be an Etsy RC.D. And here you have your various startup scripts. Now an important thing you should know about is RC.local. You can see it doesn't exist right here. But this is a very important file. And what this would be is this would run after your regular scripts and it would be a custom script made by you to add any customized startups or devices that you would like to start up on boot 
And so you have to remember the rc.local is a customized startup file for your own personal needs. And this could be on a test too. Let's jump into our Ubuntu box real quick here and look at the startup scripts here. So we're in the Etsy directory. Let's go ahead and do an ls. And I will scroll here. And you can see that you have under Etsy directly, you have your RC zeros, and these are directories.d. But notice this one does have an rc.local in it, what we just talked about. So again, this is your extra customized script, which comes after your regular RC startup scripts. And you can either find these, you can usually find all the startup scripts in Etsy because they are system files and used by the system during startup. Now some other commands you can use. Remember we talked about those init levels earlier. If I wanted to shut down the machine, I could use an init zero. Now you do have to be root to do this. I could use an init six and I just click enter and the machine will reboot. However, we do not want to do this right now. You have an older antiquated power off command which may or may not work on some systems. But the more common command used would be shutdown. And you can provide an H for halt. So shutdown halt. But you can throw in a 5 there, which means in 5 minutes you're going to shut down. Let's see what happens here. You can see that it'll broadcast a message to everybody logged into this machine. It is only me, of course, right at this moment. And I can do a control C to sh cancel the shutdown. Now if I was on a different terminal I would have got my prompt back without having to cancel that. Let's try this again and control C will cancel the shutdown. You do have a shutdown dash C if you want to cancel the shutdown and it cannot find it because it already did cancel it. And one other option you can use is your shutdown dash R, which will reboot instead of halting. So the dash H is to halt, and the dash R is to reboot. And if you change your mind a couple minutes before it shuts down, you throw out a quick shutdown dash C, and it will cancel any active shutdown process that is about to occur. Now let's ha hop back on our Fedora 64. I hope this isn't confusing you, but what this is, is it's giving you two different perspectives on how two different flavors would work. So let's talk about the Grub and the Lilo configurations. Now Lilo is an older antiquated bootloader, which you won't find on too many systems. So since we're in the Fedora slash Red Hat, we can use the RPM command with a query and see if we have Lilo on the machine. As you can see, it is not installed. I just wanted to clarify that. If you did have a machine that had Lilo installed, you would find the configuration file right there under Etsy. Now we can talk about the GRUB. The GRUB bootloader stands for Grand Unified Bootloader. And this will be held in your boot directory. That kind of makes sense, right? All your boot ups are going to be in your boot directory. Not in Etsy, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So we're going to CD to boot, and you see a grub2 directory there. We're going to get into the grub2 directory and do an ls, and in here you see a grub.cfg. Let's go ahead and see what that file is, and I'm going to pipe it to less to see the top. The very first line you see is do not edit, right? So it tells you here that you can get your settings from Etsy default grub. So let's go ahead and quit this. Let's go to Etsy default, clear the screen, and in here you see a grub. Let's go ahead and VI the grub to edit the file. And here you can see some of the changes that you can make for the grub menu. And you have your timeout, which is most common. And this is different areas where you can get to the grub configuration menu. Let's hop on the Ubuntu 64 machine real quick. And let's go ahead and go into the 
boot slash grub menu, which does exist. And this one also has a grub.cfg file. Let's just confirm the same things that we saw earlier. This one again says do not edit this file directly and go to the Etsy default grub. So I'm going to quit that. I'm going to go to the Etsy default and you can see the grub in here. That's VI to enter the VIM editor, text editor. And you can see right here the same options, but this gives you another clue. If you make any changes here, you do an update dash grub to make sure that the file is properly updated. So just for fun, I'm going to change this grub timeout to 15 seconds instead of 10. And I'm going to save it. Now I'm going to do update grub. And you can see here, it is sending out that change to all these different options. And anytime you make a change to that Etsy default grub, you run update dash grub, which will go ahead and provide the updates out to the proper files in the system. This concludes the boot up and grub lessons for the Linux system. This was a very simple overview. Again, I'm not a guru or an expert. I'm just sharing my knowledge with you, and we are all learning together. I appreciate you watching this video, and hope you come back again for Last Humans Tech. Thank you.